Good morning and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to part eight. Holy moly, all the eight in our video series on personal finance and budgets. Now, uh, this is the final video for this uh, series. And uh, just covering what we've already covered with this unit, of course, we established that this information doesn't come from Mr. C, right? This is information presented by um, Dave Ramsey and his series on financial peace from um, uh, his, well, I say his book, Financial Peace. And then, of course, um, his series on uh, based off the idea of Financial Peace University. Okay, it's not a real name. It's just a marketing term, but you get the idea, right? In the first video, we looked at morality, all right, and the importance of uh, money and the person that controls the money, how it's used is important, right? More so than money itself, because money is just a tool. We looked at the importance of savings and why savings is key, right? And savings helps keep you out of debt. And we looked at debt a little bit later on. Uh, we looked at the different personalities and spending habits. Of course, those were broad ideas on how uh, people choose to, street mo or to use their money and how they treat their money. And uh, when they start making the income, so on and so forth. And we looked at the various personality types there. We looked at planning and the importance of planning. We looked at budget and what goes into a budget. And, of course, we said, hey, I can't show you everything in the budget because, hello, each person is different, right? Each person has a different set of circumstances that need, they need to follow with. And then, of course, we looked at debt and the history of debt. And then, of course, we looked at, um, you know, at looking for the deal. In other words, what to do when it's actually time to spend your money, okay? And you're saving and all that kind of good stuff. And, you know, when you choose to uh, spend, and spending is okay. You just got to control the spending. Make sure that spending doesn't control you, right? So today, we're going to look at the culmination of things. And we're looking further down the road. In other words, when you've achieved uh, the point where you don't have a lot of debt, right? Other than maybe a house, all right? Or what have you, okay? You've got money saved up for investments and such how what, what do you pay for you know what what do you need to get what do you need to consider as far as your expenses are concerned right now this is his perspective i'm going to give you a different perspective too so i'm going to give you both sides of the argument on some of these now most people don't worry about this until they're working full time out of college or out of high school right living on their own right so these are things to consider okay so as a leader, okay, I say business leader, that means you're handling your personal transactions. Remember, you're the chief financial officer of the business of you, right? Um, builds their wealth and, of course, their businesses. It's important to think about what's best for their family, themselves, the best practices, peace of mind. We talk about peace of mind, right? Not, oh, here's a peace of my mind. No, no, that's not to talk about. We're talking about peace. In other words, Ooh, saw piece, right? And uh, what is best for the various business that you're in? Maybe you're an entrepreneur. Maybe you're making money from somebody else, all right? Uh, we're going to look at maybe look at getting health insurance, okay? What's health insurance and why is health insurance important, okay? We looked at that briefly when we covered human resources in our uh, business management and entrepreneurship uh, model, right? But health insurance helps pay for unexpected costs all right it keeps the bills from the doctors low okay or what have you now a healthier person may not need as much health insurance as an less or an older person okay or um maybe an expected mother right newly married might need to consider a different type of health insurance than somebody who is you know not married or not expecting to you know uh, be a mother, right? Then there's uh, various types of life insurances. In other words, uh, benefits that pay somebody on the event of uh, someone's uh, passing away. And of course, a will. If you built things and you have things, where do those assets or those things go to in the event that that person passes away, all right? And uh, each person is different, so have some different things to consider. So there's an order of importance here, okay? An order of importance, all right? And I, I don't necessarily agree with all of these things, okay? But each person is different, right? So thinking about the four pillars, right? Your four pillars uh, include your basic needs. What are your basic needs? Food, clothing, shelter, warmth, right? Food, food, clothing, shelter, warmth, right? And there's physical needs in there as well, right? So the order of importance per Dave Ramsey, he says the first thing you want to get is homeowner's insurance or renter's insurance. That's a priority, okay? And of course, then he says auto insurance and health insurance. All right, I agree with those, okay? But maybe not in that order, okay? Now, 
If you own a home, you're going to be required, and you have a mortgage, you're going to be required to get homeowners insurance. All right, that's priority. If you have a mortgage, you are saying, okay, mortgage means, by the way, that you borrow money for a bank so that you could purchase a home. Okay, that's a big item purchase. That's a significantly significant purchase, right? So chances are you're going to get a loan for that, right? And so you would have homeowners insurance, and the bank requires you to maintain and hold homeowners insurance for at least the value of the house. Okay, you can insure belongings and other things, but it's really easy to get carried away and start paying way too much on homeowners insurance. All right, and it also helps prevent, uh, in the event that something happens on your property, you from being sued, or it helps. It doesn't help prevent you from being sued because you can be sued for anything. But in the event a lawsuit happens, okay, that money is there to help you out um, in the event that that suit uh, takes place and it happens on your property and that sort of thing, right? Renter's insurance is like homeowner's insurance except for people who rent and it covers their belongings, all right? Um, auto insurance is exactly what it sounds like, all right? In the event something happens to your automobile, okay, uh, auto insurance helps cover those items. Now, you got to make the decision. Am I driving a $500 beater that I'm just kind of putting money into to kind of make it go? All right. Or, that's fine. All right. The state requires you to carry bare minimum insurance on that. All right. Bare minimums. It means hardly nothing. And you learn more about that when you start driving your own vehicles. Okay. But bare minimums. It means if something happens to it, you're on your own. All right. So you have something happens to somebody else. Yeah, uh oh. Okay. So uh, keep in mind that state requires you to carry minimum auto insurance. If you get extra insurance, then maybe you would not put that in front of health because health insurance is very important because hospitals, all right, especially in modern times, are extremely, extremely expensive. All right. Um, without going too much into a personal story, I had a medical incident about three years back that required a um, minor series of hospitalizations. All right. Very brief, all right? It was diagnosed, it was taken care of on site, which was fine, okay? Uh, something that couldn't be taken care of by uh, um, emergency care because they weren't open or urgent care, the clinics, they weren't open, all right? And so it required a brief hospitalization, all right? It cost a lot of money. And at that point, I made the decision, I can't afford this to happen again. I'm getting older and getting more um, medical concerns, okay? So because of that, I decided to go ahead and get additional health insurance so that if an incident happens again, it's not going to cost as much money and deplete my savings because that's what ended up happening was it depleted all of my savings, every bit of it, all right? And I didn't have a lot saved at the time, but it, you can imagine how much that kind of hurt me financially, all right? Then you got to consider disability coverage. Disability coverage means in the event that uh, something happens and you can't return back to work, are you protected? The short-term and long-term disability. Again, we kind of briefly discussed that when we covered our human, unit on human resources and the benefits of human resources um, uh, division of the business might offer their employees as incentives to keep working there. You got life insurance, all right? And of course, we talked about that earlier. It was underlined and of course, other various supplemental insurances. Those are the order of importance, all right? I would say that, um, you know, depending on your case, you might want to play around with one, two, and three and put them in various orders depending on your situations, right? And then of course, definitely four, five, six, seven are definitely the areas that I would go with as far as uh, in that order, okay? So those are things you got to think about. Again, this is in context of those who are working, who are a little bit more mature, so on and so forth, but it's good things to know what they are. By the way, you might want to uh, Google or look up those underlying words because that sounds like they're important, right? All right, so next slide here. All right, so when it comes to personal insurances and investments, you've got to do the math. You've got to figure out the costs, all right? As I said earlier, okay, if you don't do the math and you can't figure out the costs, okay, you might end up paying more than what you need to, okay? So you got to consider what kind of coverage you're going to get. Coverage means what are they going to pay for in the event that something happens, okay? And sometimes that coverage might say, okay, we're going to cover up to $20,000 for a one-day hospital stay, which is a lot, right? And you may only have to pay 10% uh, of that, okay? So that means to, uh, what is it? 10% of 20,000 is uh, 2,000, okay? And and that's fine if they choose to do that. It might be less. They might say, hey, you're going to cap your spending at any hospital stay that you have to go to. It's going to be capped at $500. All 
oh, wow, $500, that doesn't sound too bad, right? All right, so that's your deductible, okay? That means how much you pay, and then they pay the rest, okay? But there is coverage. In other words, how much coverage do you get, okay? Do they max out the coverage? Does it go continually, so on and so forth? You're going to have to study that and know that. Each business and each insurance company is different, all right? Each uh, business that offers insurance might choose different providers who have different plans available depending on their size, so on and so forth, right? All right, so here's a cool thing to keep in mind. If you have a higher deductible, in other words, you pay more up front, right? You're going to pay lower rates. In other words, lower per month for those fees, those services, okay? But here's the thing. If you find, like I said earlier, Mr. C is, although um, I'm pretty healthy, okay? Uh, certain things do come up every once in a while. So I chose to get additional insurance because the minimums weren't covering me and it put me out in a bad spot by depleting my savings, all right? So I don't use it. I use it more frequently than I did when I was in my 20s, okay? But I, you know, the, I'm not using it very frequently. So I have a certain coverage that I thought was best for my situation. Here, here's the thing, right? If somebody can lower all of their benefits to rates, where they're paying maybe only, um, say, let's say they were paying 750 per year, right? And then they change something, and uh, let's say they went to a $250 deductible, and then they change that $250 deductible to a $1,000 deductible, right? And what have you, all right? What? How can you use that better? You know, think about this, right? Let's say that you lowered your expenses $750 by changing all your things, right? And you chose certain plans you didn't need and you made some adjustments and what have you. How could that $750 be used better, okay? You've got to figure it out. you got to do the math, all right? All right, so um, there's a term there, liability, all right? Larger liability coverage will protect the insured. Liability means um, basically... Uh, kind of like a if you owe a credit creditor somebody or so, owe somebody something right you have to pay it okay because you have the liability all right so there you go you can Google that term on your own so remember the, just just do the math when it comes time to buying your first insurance don't go crazy oh they're offering insurance I want the best premium and the best everything you might not need it all right all right so in the event of an accident, all right, this is for people who mature, okay? So you might want to talk to your folks about this and what have you. But in the event of an accident, it's good to have what is called a, quote, legacy drawer. All right, and a legacy drawer is something that family members can easily find, right, and have access to. It might contain um, account numbers for various savings accounts or investment accounts. It might con have contacts. Who do you contact in the event that something happens, right? It might have passwords, for um, uh, online uh, accounts or what have you, or accounts that can be accessed online. They might have policies, wills, contracts, so on and so forth that are very important, right? And of course, that's the idea that something happens in the event of someone's death. That's, that's just unexpected, okay? Now, here's the thing, right? As you start to grow and mature, right? And you start acquiring things because you've managed your money so well and your income is doing so good, right? You don't want the state of Florida or the state of wherever you're living in to come in and start choosing who your property goes to because that's what will happen all right in the event there's not a will the state will come in and make things happen okay and you don't want that all right because you want to decide what happens to the items that you've invested so that goes to your loved ones accordingly all right and this can often lead to family feuds which is bad you don't want to lead to you don't want to have your death lead to a separation of love all right essentially okay all right so here is some basic concepts that you can remember and take with you financially that I think are very, very, very powerful, all right? All right, one, the basic principle states, and there's a basic finance principle that Mr. C learned, and this is something I interjected here, okay? A dollar today is more than a dollar tomorrow. Let me repeat that. A dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. And you've seen me use this example here in class, right? I've wrote it on the board, right? When Mr. C was in high school, okay, if I wanted to go buy the cheap bread, okay, and my, my pop set me down to get the cheap bread, now those, don't spend a whole lot of money, get the cheapest stuff you could find, it cost 59 cents, okay, for the cheap bread. Sometimes 89 cents if it wasn't on sale, okay, that's fine. That same cheap bread, 
is not 59 or 89 cents today, is it, right? That represents inflation, okay? That means it takes more dollars to get the same thing it used to, right? So therefore, we can assume that a dollar back then bought you more, okay? So a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow, right? The key to money management is avoiding right now today, right? Don't fall into that impulse, right? But, you know, spend it and spend it wisely, okay, if you're going to spend money, okay? Um, you you got to be smart. You got to plan. You got to go and do your right thing, okay? Do the right thing, right? Managing money takes maturity. It takes discipline. And like I said earlier, just you got to avoid the impulse, the I want, the I want, the I want, right? Look, Mr. C wants a new truck. I'd love to have a new truck, right? But I have other goals in mind, okay? And so I'm going to keep my truck running for quite a while until I make those goals happen. And then I'll consider getting a newer to me truck, right? Right now, my truck is good. Not perfect, but it's good, all right? All right, generally speaking, interest, all right, on debt is more, right? So you're going to pay more rates than you will on yields for investments, all right? Let me repeat that. If you're paying rates because you owe people money, you're going to pay more than you will when you receive money for investments, okay? It, it, just the way it is, all right? Uh, therefore, it's better to live without a lot of debt or debt-free and then start investing, all right? That's the basic concept there, all right? Ideally, 15% of your total income should go to retirement plans, but that's only if you're living debt-free, all right? So ideally, 15%. Each person is different. Some people might only be able to do 10 some people might be able to do five, all right? You've got to figure that out, make those judgment calls, and make that work for you, all right? Um, there are also things called individual retirement accounts, or IRAs, and uh, 401ks and 403bs. These are special uh, accounts that you can put money into through your employer, and uh, they have special tax treatment, so you don't get taxed like multiple times on making your investments, right? Um, and then, of course, um, you can see what an IRA there is. An IRA is an individual retirement account. It's a $5,000 cap. Uh, that means that you can't put more than $5,000 into it. Um, and the cool thing is, is that um, um, anybody can have an IRA, okay? It doesn't matter as long as you're working for somebody, right? Now, um, there you go. I'm not going to go into too many details about that because it's something you learn about more as you get older, right? I just want you to be familiar with it. Um, there's uh, various in pension plans, okay, that are available. Um, those can be uh, from the state or uh, from the individuals. Pension plans aren't really the big thing anymore as more people are going to 401k and IRAs. So I'm not going to spend too much time there. Uh, 401k is um, a little bit different than a pension plan because you're actually investing into various stocks and investments and so on and so forth. Um, and that's kind of cool. And then they're not capped and sometimes they're even matched by the employer. The employer might say, hey, we'll match up to 5%. In other words, when they say match, that means if you put 5% in, we'll put that equal money in for you in addition. That is really cool, right? And that's a good way to double your money on your income, right? Or your, your investments, right? So um, that, there's the idea. Can you read these on your own? I'm just covering this very, very, very briefly here all right you got 4013 b's for nonprofit and civil uh, civilized or civil organizations in other words mr c works for a school and if i choose to i can invest in a 403 b i got a couple goals i'm we're trying to hit before i do that okay you got ed education savings accounts all right um and these are called sometimes education ras these are things that you're you can put into for your future kids or your parents can put into act for you for you to go to school in the future okay and then of course um there are things that are not good investments all right because of various reasons one insurance as a savings plan not good okay in other words you don't want to invest in insurance in, in insurance okay and then have something happen because that's not savings you're just paying and paying and paying okay it's not savings all right um, bonds, usually bonds and government bonds don't have a lot of return with them, okay? And so those are really, you want to avoid them because there's, even a savings account can have more return than a bond can, all right? So you don't want to, you want to avoid bonds. And of course, um, prepaid tuition things, I don't recommend those and neither does Dave Ramsey, okay? And there's various reasons why and some people do it and that's fine, but I do, it's not recommended, all right? And you can do your research on that as to why and why not. I'm not going to go into it on this lesson, all right? So... 
Here, here's the thing, all right? Here's the thing you want to keep in mind. I'm going to wrap this up here very soon because I'm already at 19 minutes. According to the college board, okay, the college board, all right, uh, for the 2015 to 2016 school year, I'll just read this as it is, all right, the average cost of tuition and fees per year, right? If you go to private college, that's where Mr. C went, okay, um, University of Miami is a private college, okay, uh, it is 32405 for your tuition. That means for the classes, okay, all right? That means if you go to private college for four years, you're going to spend 129 or almost 130,000, right? State colleges, right, for public residents. In other words, if you go to a state college, right, or state university in the state of Florida and you're a Florida resident, right, um, the tuition is only 9,410, right? So only $40,000 if you get a bachelor's degree. That doesn't sound too bad, right? But if you're out of state, you know, you're going to pay a whole lot more for the bachelor's degree, right? Uh, going to that state university. Now, those does, those fees and tuition does not include things like staying in a dorm, eating food, so on and so forth, okay? So here's the thing, right? The average student, and this is back in the figures from 2015 to 2016, so this was 10 years ago, okay? Or not, yeah, five years ago, based off of today's recording date, five years ago. The average student will graduate with a little more than $35,000 in student loan debt, okay? Um, personal story, okay? Mr. C had a lot more than that in student loan debt, all right? And then that was according to an analysis of government data by Mark Kontrovitz and then, uh, I'm sorry, Kantrowitz, all right, and uh, some investors, right? Investors is a group of websites about planning and paying for college and so on and so forth, all right? Yeah. That is a lot of money to come out of, right? Now, just think about this, right? You go to state college, you come out with $40,000 in debt. Not too horrendous. That's like buying a really nice new car, okay? And then paying that and paying that, right? Mr. C would have gladly have had to pay that off as opposed to the amount that he had to pay off, all right? See that top figure there? Mm-hmm. Private university? Mm-hmm. All right, there you go. All right, so that's like having a pretty nice house to make payments on, all right? So you don't want that. You don't want to be loaded with debt as soon as you graduate college if you choose to go to college, all right? Nothing wrong with it if you choose to go to college, but you got to make the right choices, all right? So 70% um, of the students borrow money. That's not good, right? And um, there's a myth that says you can't go to college without getting loans. That is complete poop. Okay, it's not good. It's it, it's not that that's that's a myth, right? You can do it. You may not be able to choose the best school to go to because of what you could afford, but that's fine. Just like you can't always afford the best clothing. Okay, each person is different. All right. Um, now, uh, scholarship offers for those that earn higher grades and prep scores. Great. There are scholarship offers, right? And there are there's financial aid that's available, right? And we're all aware of the bright futures and so on and so forth that helps pay college expenses for those who earn good grades in the state of Florida and go to state college, right? You can go to part-time work to pay for state college for two years, then transfer to the primary university so you have less debt. That's a great option, okay? Um, and I would even say that if you're one of those students who choose to dual enroll when you get to high school, so you're taking both college courses and high school courses okay you're going to be a great spot because in two years after going to uh the private university i'm sorry going to the university whether it's private or public right um you'll have that bachelor's at least credits to earn the bachelor's all right so um there's great college and community college uh programs that are out there that have a really good education even our local college provides fantastic education okay and um you know i learned more in those classes than i did from you know other classes okay so there you go all right so here we are the last exercise and activity for this lesson all right so a couple of quick things all right and um you should be able to answer all of these questions pretty easily some fill in the gap there or fill in the blanks there and then of course you got a space for the second question about um more secure than a pension plan and then uh that last question there uh you know, I want you to consider even if you're not going to college, you don't plan on going to college, I still think that's an important way or question to answer. So that, ladies and gentlemen, brings me to the end of this video series, and uh, I hope you took something from it. Thank you for watching.